I'm not preaching on myself today. Preach, I'm preaching on y'all today. Amen. I preached on myself last week. I'm going to take a break. Mother Donna. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Today we're going to talk about fighting in the spirit. Hallelujah. Fighting in the spirit. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't fight enough. Or we don't fight hard enough. Or we don't put up a good fight. Amen. One thing you got to learn about God. God is a spirit. And they that worship him but worship him in spirit and in truth. One of the things about worshiping God is that, and I'm going to show you today, that every time you say something or they say something that, that wasn't spiritual, Jesus told them they were wrong. Every time they made a suggestion, every time they, they questioned, every time they said anything, Jesus corrected them. And you're going to find out most of the time the disciples, when they were talking to Jesus, they were saying, help me to understand, help me to understand. And every time they said something thinking that they were saying the right thing, Jesus let them know that's wrong. The only one time that they say something where well, Jesus agreed with them, and we'll read that, I think I have it in my note, is when Peter said, Thou art the Christ. He said, Flesh and blood didn't give you that one. He said, My Father, which is in heaven, gave you that one. But everything else, everything else that we say that's, that's, that's not spiritual, you don't know what you're talking about. Amen. 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 You have to. Two, number one, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Number two, you got to let the Holy Ghost do the talking. Amen. If you don't allow the Holy Ghost to do the talking, you do not know what you're talking about. It's just that simple. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Let's read. He said, Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am based among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with you with that confidence wherein I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war. Though we walk in the flesh, the flesh is not our fight. We are not fighting against the flesh. Amen. Come on. Verse 4. He said what? For our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of thrones. Keep something there. And I want you to go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Keep something in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 because we will be back. Amen. But I want you to go to Matthew chapter 16. Remember now, we're fighting in the spirit. And the thing I want you to get today, that the fight that we have is, is that if you are thinking carnal, if you are not using scripture to defend yourself, to, to protect yourself, to help yourself, you're wrong. And you're going to lose the battle. Because that means you're fighting a spiritual war with fleshly, with, with fleshly weapons. And the fleshly weapons weapons is never going to defeat Satan. Amen. It's never going to defeat those spirits that's out there that's against us. Matthew chapter 16 verse 21. What does it say? From that time forth, Jesus began, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciple how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be Listen, folk don't want to be beat, folk don't want to be killed, folk don't want to be talked about, folk don't want to suffer persecution, folk don't want to be hated, folk don't want to be mistreated, folk don't want to be talked about. That goes with the life of a saint. 
Amen. And when you think that you are not going to suffer, when you think you're not going to have hard time, that's carnal. Amen. And that's why the devil jacks you up in your life. He make you walk around thinking God wants to put a bunch of carnal stuff in your pocket and it causes you to drift away from God. And he tell you God loves you and God wants to protect you and he want to give you carnal thing that's not of God. Amen. Come on. Verse 22. And then Peter took him, began to rebuke him, saying, be it far from thee Lord this shall not be Jesus you will not suffer Jesus you are not going to die Jesus nobody is going to talk about you Jesus nobody is going to mistreat you that's carnal amen that ain't of the spirit come on verse 23 what did Jesus say but he turned and said unto Peter get thee behind me Satan thou art an offense thou art an offense when you tell me I'm not supposed to suffer, you are an offense unto me. Don't tell me that, because that ain't Bible. Amen? Read it again. Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the thing that be of God. Savorous meaning you have no compassion, you have no desire, you have no inkling to want to do the things of God. You want to do the things of yourself. Amen. And when you trying to please your flesh, because you don't want your flesh to suffer pain, you don't want your flesh to suffer persecution, you don't want your flesh to go through nothing hard time or no hard time. God said, that's of man. That is not of me. Amen. Luke chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. I'm trying to show you whenever you get to run in your mouth and it ain't spiritual, it's flesh. When it's flesh, God is going to correct you. That's why we are corrected all the time. Listen, Jesus corrected them all the time. Amen. There was one occasion when, when Peter cut off the man's ear because he wanted to harm Jesus. Jesus said, Peter, put your sword down. Don't you know, if I wanted to redeem myself, I do not need your help. So I'm not here to fight a carnal war I'm here to fight a spiritual war he put the man's ear back on amen hallelujah there was another occasion when they got to the arguing about he told Jesus tell my brother he ought to divide with me he ought to give me my portion Jesus said I did not come down here to deal with no junk like that listen if he want to be nice that's his call and if he doesn't want to be nice that's his call but don't get me involved in that hallelujah don't get me involved in your personal carnal affair hallelujah because God said I don't deal with that kind of stuff I came down here to get your soul right oh hallelujah there was another time when they told Jesus he was inside the, the temple preaching and they said your mama and your brother is out there he said behold my mother and my brother they that do it the will of my father ain't stepped about no carnal mama if she ain't obeying the will of God hallelujah I'm trying to show you but we think we ought to love our mama we think we ought to do right Jesus said when it come to me when it come to the spirit your mama don't mean nothing if she ain't keeping my commandment we're talking about this is a spiritual warfare stop thinking carnal stuff when you think that you can do spiritual stuff with carnal mean you're gonna lose the battle amen hallelujah another occasion they said the man said lord he jesus said come on be my disciple and he said let me go bury my dead daddy he said let me tell you something if you go bury your dead daddy don't come back i don't need you you're no good for me hallelujah i'm trying to show you something this is a spiritual warfare stop thinking you're gonna give feet the devil thinking carnal huh? you worrying about your mama you worrying about a dead daddy and Jesus said I don't even care nothing about him thank you Jesus hallelujah he said now another occasion he said if you don't leave your mama and if you can't leave your own life also you can't be my disciple hallelujah. so what make you think he's concerned about you only if it's spiritual thing oh thank you Jesus what did I tell you to go Luke chapter 10 hallelujah I'm going to help you today. Y'all losing the battle because y'all not thinking spiritual. You're thinking carnal. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Every time. I want y'all, y'all could go through the Bible. Every time they did something that wasn't spiritual, Jesus let them know it was wrong. The only time, the only time he took their advice is when Peter said, thou art the Christ. And he said, flesh and blood didn't give you that. My father, which is in heaven, gave you that. But everything else you come up with, Peter, you came up with it. And it don't mean a hill of bean. Chapter 10, verse 17 of the book of Luke. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love being saved. You got it? Verse 17, what does it say? 
and the 70 returned again with joy saying Lord even the devil are subject unto us through thy name even listen they came back excited oh we whooping the devil we whooping the devil you get all of these old jack leg preachers and these fake these fake healers talking about yeah and we was out there and the devil was subject to us Jesus said y'all got this thing mixed up it don't matter cause nobody's subject to you you can whoop Satan anytime you feel like it cause I told you read the next verse he said well and he said unto them I beheld Satan he said I done told you Satan ain't nothing no way and you excited cause you can whoop somebody that ain't worth nothing you excited cause you can whoop something that ain't got no power in the first place he said behold I give unto you power to tread on serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy and nothing <laughs> He said, let's get something straight, y'all. God said, I done gave you power that you can step on the devil's neck anytime you feel like it. I done gave you the power that you can whoop serpent anytime you feel like it. And you rejoicing because you can do something that's very easy to do. Hallelujah. That's like me going to the bathroom and come back and say, oh, I used the bathroom all by myself. God said, you idiot. Listen, you don't think you can do that? You don't think you can whoop Satan anytime you feel like it? You reason you can't because you're whooping with carnal things. So you excited because Cause you went out and made the devil bow listen the devil ought to bow to you anyway he said that ain't what you get excited about come on what you ought to get excited about verse 20 he said well notwithstanding in this rejoice not he said get something straight don't you rejoice because the devil bowed to you a long time ago that he's like a ro I told you he ain't got no power but you don't seem to believe that come on notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather but rather rejoice because of what you ought to be getting excited because you're on your way to heaven you ought to be getting excited because God can redeem you you ought to be getting excited that God can heal you you ought to be getting don't get excited be oh holly you excited about the wrong stuff quiet cause you're calling you ain't listen you're fighting a spiritual warfare it's not a carnal warfare Matthew go back to Matthew chapter 16 thank you Jesus another occasion they came to Jesus and said Jesus we done left all what we got he said you ain't left nothing boy he said uh, he said all of y'all that think you done left something I'm gonna give you houses I'm gonna give you cars I'm gonna give you money I'm gonna give you brothers I'm gonna give you sisters I'm gonna give you mama I'm gonna give you daddy with tribulation Amen with tribulation you think you done left something you think cause you went off and left your two brothers and two sisters get in the church I'm gonna give you 50 brothers and 50 sisters so get out of my faith thinking that you done gave up something for me you ain't gave up nothing for me matter of fact I got a brother that's gonna treat you better than your blood brother treated you I got a sister that's gonna treat you better than your blood sister treated you you think you gave up something you ain't gave up nothing I got a mother in the church that's gonna treat you better than your treated you I got a pastor that gonna treat you better than your daddy ever treated you ain't gave up nothing he's saying guess what I'm gonna give you tribulations with that but rejoice oh hallelujah he said I got something better he said not only will I give you that I'm gonna bring you to heaven hallelujah but see you ain't even thinking about heaven you thinking about what you done gave up on this earth Lord I gave up all what you got for me Lord I gave up everything what you got for me he said I'm going to give you all that stuff back with tribulation because you ain't going to never not have test and trial he said but I'm going to also give you oh I'm going to bring you to heaven and you worrying about you worrying about what this junk because you fighting a spiritual warfare with carnal stuff you think you need you think you need a mama you think you need a brother you think you need a sister. You think you need that. He said, I'm going to give you some back. He said, but what you fail to realize, what you need more than anything is to make sure you get to heaven. You done forgot about that, Peter. That's more important because mama going to die. Sister going to die. Brother going to die. And you going to die. And y'all ain't going to have no more communication once you die. Then what you got? What you got when you die, Peter? oh hallelujah thank you Jesus he said but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven 
but you don't get excited about that. You getting excited because God put some money. Listen, you ever notice how people get up and testify? Nobody is testifying how holy they living. Nobody is testifying how righteous they getting. Nobody is testifying how God is fixing their mind, taking them out of the dope den, taking them out of the whore den. They testifying because they got a job. They testifying because they paid their house note. They testifying because they got a spouse. Listen, and all of that stuff going to give you problems. I ain't had a problem to this day because I stopped saying it. Hallelujah. I want to hear somebody say, I'm glad, hallelujah, to be saved. I'm glad that God brought me out of the whole house. I'm glad that God took me off a of dope. Hallelujah. I don't care if I'm broke. I ain't high no more. I don't care if I ain't got a friend in this world. Listen, I'm in my right mind. Hallelujah. Stop testifying over carnal stuff and testify over some spiritual thing. Why you don't do that? Because you're carnal. You are trying to whoop the devil. You are trying to whoop spiritual being with some carnal. I don't care if God ever fix anything that's broken in my body. Just get me to heaven. Folks come, folks come to the prayer line. They come up for healing. They flock to old line Benny Hinn because they want to get some fake healing. That man ain't healing nobody. And he hollering about what the devil did. The devil ain't did nothing. The devil is with you, brother. Hallelujah. Thank you. But folks flock to him to get some fake healing. When somebody going to flock to him and say, man, will you please pray for me that I don't go back to committing adultery. Pray for me that I don't go back to fornicate. Pray for me that I stop robbing banks. Hallelujah. But everybody want God to fix their eye so they can walk straight. All right. So you're walking straight. Hallelujah. But you're on your way to hell. Listen, you were on your way to hell crippled. Now you're on your way to hell walking up right. Hallelujah. What benefit is it to you? Hallelujah. What benefit... Oh, hallelujah. We're talking about a spiritual. We're fighting spiritual over here. We got a spiritual warfare going on. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16. Did I tell you that? Yes. Verse 5. Hallelujah. We're in a spiritual warfare. Come on. Verse 5. You got it? Read. What does it say? And when his disciple will come to the other side, they had forgotten. They forgot to take bread. Take no thought what you're going to eat. Take no thought. Oh, I ain't got no money. I don't know what I'm going to eat. You're always worrying about that old flesh. What you're going to feed yourself. Hallelujah. God said, take no thought. Don't worry about it. Come on. Verse 6, he said, well, then Jesus said unto them, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisee and of the Sadducee. And they reason among themselves. Oh, he fussing at us because we didn't bring no bread. He said, take heed about the leaven, because the leaven referred to cooking and what the ingredients you use to make the bread rise. And he think, listen, God ain't standing about no bread. Hallelujah. You think Jesus is worried about some bread? Hallelujah. You think Jesus, the God that made heaven and earth, is worried about some water? You got the Holy Ghost on the inside, and you think your body is worried about getting some water when the Holy Ghost knows when it needs some water? Man. Oh, I'm trying to show you something. You worried about carnal stuff. Don't you know you got God on the inside? Yeah. And you worried about is your body going to be strong enough to get up in the morning? Well, the Holy Ghost got to get up and he's getting up. Don't you know man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You function because God said you can function. Come on. Right now. now you complaining because you didn't bring no bread. The God that made heaven and earth needs some bread. The God that made everything needs some bread. The God that made bread needs the bread that he made. He didn't have to make it. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. I'm letting you know you fight a spiritual warfare with carnal supplies. That's why you keep running out. That's right. You want to get some you want to get some fleshly food to keep you sustained to fight a spiritual battle. You hear me say that again. You want to get some fleshly food so you can sustain to fight a spiritual battle. That's why you keep losing. You better get some spiritual food to fight a spiritual battle. You better get some prayer to whoop Satan. You better get some, listen, you better get some love to whoop Satan. You better get some Holy Ghost to whoop Satan. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Chapter, we still in 16. What verse we stopped at? Eight. Read eight. He said, what? 
which when Jesus perceived, O oh, ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourself? Because ye you have brought no bed. Do ye yet not understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up, neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Don't you know I fed you with one fish and a piece of bread? You forgot that? I came around when you didn't know me. You forgot all of the things I did for you. And all of a sudden now you done got saved and you can't do nothing for me. You think that you got to have food to walk around when I let you walk around doped out, hold out and everything. And you didn't die. And now all of a sudden you're going to die. Because you're carnal. Because you're carnal. You ain't spiritual. You keep thinking that the way you're going to whoop this battle, whoop Satan over here, you think you got to have a big full belly. God say, I ain't stepping about no food. I can give you food anytime I feel like it. I can let you be full and you ain't ate nothing. Yeah. I've been telling somebody ever since we've been going all this fasting, I eat just because I know I need to eat. I have no desire for food. Remember I told y'all we going to fast till food becomes secondary. Hallelujah. I find myself going all day and then I remembered seven or eight. Oh, I didn't eat nothing. I didn't eat nothing all day. Listen, hallelujah. I'm trying to get you to see food don't keep us moving, y'all. The word of God keep us moving. Oh, hallelujah. But you think it's food. If I don't get no food, I'm going to get sick and, and I, I, I'm gonna, this going to stop working and that's going to stop working. Do you really think that the, 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 the vegetables you eat keep your stuff functioning? God. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I got a lot of scriptures I want to get them to you. Come on. I'm going to comment on that as I preach. Come on. Go to chapter 15 of, of the book of Matthew. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all got to get all of this in your, in your spirit. Amen. Chapter 15. Verse 10. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Trying to show us something here. It's time for us to fight spiritual. It's time for us to fight spiritual. We fasting again. Amen. Wednesday midnight. Amen. I'm sorry, Tuesday midnight. Until Friday at 4. Amen. That's all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, Friday at 4. You do it if you want to do it. If you don't, you don't have to. It's your call. But listen, hallelujah. We're going to whoop Satan over here. We're going to get Satan out of all of our lives. We're going to get Satan out of every life that we got on this board. Hallelujah. We're going to whoop him and we're going to whoop him. Because the Bible says he's already defeated. I'm just waiting for God to reveal it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm excited because my name is in. I told y'all when John saw them 10 and 20 of 40 and 20 elders up there. Listen, I was one of them. I was one of them. Not I want to be. Not I think. Not I might. I am one of them. Oh, hallelujah. Because I have made up my mind. I know who I'm fighting. And I know the only way I'm going to whoop him is with some spiritual stuff. The only way I'm going to whoop him is knowing the word of God. The only way I'm going to whoop him is by coming to church. The only way I'm going to whoop him is by fasting and prayer. On one occasion, they actually get the demons out. He said, you don't understand. You got to have fasting and prayer to whoop some of these demons. Some of these fellas are rough. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Some of these demons are bad. Y'all should know that because y'all can't whoop them. That's why they still strong in your life because you don't want to fast and pray them out. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Chapter 15, you got it? Verse 10, what does it say? <laughs> Hear ye and understand. They were debating about eating with dirty hands. Arguing about eating with dirty hands. Well, you mean that you save and you eating with dirty hands? The Bible says you ain't supposed to eat with no dirty hands. Uh, they say arguing about a bunch of nothing. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, verse 11, he said what? Not that which goeth into the mouth. Listen, you can eat all the dirt you want. I'm from Mississippi. We used to eat that old red clay dirt. You can eat all the dirt you want. That dirt didn't make me evil. You can put all of the junk you want in your system. That ain't going to make you evil. Come on, read the verse again. Verse 11, all the way. He said what? Not that which goeth into the mouth defile a man, but that which come out of the mouth. Oh, hallelujah. All the junk that we put in our system, he said that ain't what make you bad. What jacks you up is the fact that what comes out of your mouth and what comes out of your mouth comes out of your heart. But your heart had nothing. Listen, that dirt you ate got nothing to do with that old mean heart you got. Amen. 
tell you something else. That alcohol you drink got nothing to do with that old slutty side of you that comes out. That's right. Hoish, sluttish, nasty, vile, evil, degrading. Listen, putrid. That's a, that stuff comes out of your heart. That alcohol helps it come out, but the alcohol didn't put it there. Well, you know, I get crazy when I get drunk. No, you show your true colors when you get drunk. You understand? What you put in got nothing to do with what comes out. It comes out because it's already in you. Oh, hallelujah. You just needed something to blind your heart so you don't, oh, hallelujah. You don't want to see it. You want to ignore it so you intoxicate yourself so you can show your true color. I'm a whore by nature. I'm a dog by nature. I'm low down by nature. I'm evil by nature. Why? Because it's already in me. So I got the old. I got to fight and get it out of me. Yeah. I'm fighting a spiritual warfare. Yes. Hallelujah. Listen, me getting married ain't going to stop me from being no whore. Right. Me getting married just going to make me a better whore. Because right. I'm going to learn how to cheat real good then. Because I can't get caught. But when I'm single, I don't care if I get caught. But I want to be, be a professional whore. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to show you. It's in us. It's in us, and we ain't gonna get it out by thinking, well, I'm gonna get married, that gonna contain me. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. What gonna contain you is to go to church. What gonna contain you is to be told how to stop. What gonna contain you is the word of God. In other words, a spiritual battle. Listen, if you don't fight with a spiritual oh, holly, if you don't take out that sword, which is the word of God, so when you go to commit adultery, you see something can say, John, you're gonna go to hell if you do that. John, God don't like it. So that's why I'm not gonna do it. Not because that woman ain't fine. You understand? Not because y'all don't like the way that man look. I'm not going to do it because God said not to do it. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm going to get good at obeying God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to show you. Everything we do, we do it because it's in us. So I got to find out how to get this junk out of me. Why? Because if I don't get it out, it's going to come out another way. And it ain't going to be pretty. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. What was that? Verse 10 and 11. Go back to 2 Corinthians now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the dead bury the dead. Every time. Go back over there and read that. Read the, read the gospel. Every time they said something, Jesus corrected them. Every time. Why? Because they didn't have no Holy Ghost. Amen. They didn't know nothing about no spiritual warfare. They, uh, listen, people think that they know what they're doing because they got an education. Education, do you have the Holy Ghost? Do you have the Spirit of God on the inside? Chapter 10, you're back over there. Verse 5. Let's read 4 and 5 now. He said, Well, for 4, he said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down, hallelujah, imagination, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and to bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Listen, I get the thought to commit adultery, but I make it, I capture it, and bring it, you do that. I'm going to put you in obedience to the word of God. Listen, hallelujah. I'm going to cast you down because I got the Holy Ghost and I ain't going to do it. I'm going to put you in captivity. I'm going to take you and I'm going to lock you up and you ain't coming back out. I'm going to keep you so locked down. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. In my case, I locked up the lust and I threw away the key because I said from now on, every woman except my wife is nasty. You're nasty. I don't care how pretty you make yourself look. You're nasty. Hallelujah. And as much as the more you flirt with me, the nastier I make you. Hallelujah. Thank you, G. I make my mind make you so nasty till after a while I don't even want to touch you. I don't even want to get in your presence because you keep flirting with me. You keep flirting with me. You keep showing me how nasty you are. Listen, I got you locked up. You can't get, you can't get to. I'm casting down every imagination, and I'm oh hallelujah! I like the way he put that and bringing it into captivity. In other words, you can't ever get out. Amen. You can't ever convince me. You can't ever get me to think that you something else. Cause I made up in my mind you're nasty. 
Oh, hallelujah. That's what he mean by casting down the imagination. I'm not going to imagine, man, if I was to get her, if I was to get her naked, is she pretty? I like to see her behind. Maybe she got some pretty legs. Maybe I want to look at that tattoo. No, I'm casting down the imagination. I, listen, I ain't never seen you naked, so I have to imagine what you look like. And since I'm not going to imagine that, Y'all don't get it. Amen. See, y'all let your imagination run wild with you. You go to thinking, well, maybe. I ain't maybe nothing about your conceited. You're nasty. <laughs> you, maybe you ain't nasty to Aaron, but, but you get my point. You're nasty. Amen. I'm not going to imagine what you look like because you're nasty. You can't dress sexy enough for me because you're nasty. I'm casting down the imagination Oh, Holly, and I'm putting it in captivity. When, the, when you put something in captivity, it don't come out. Amen. It, hey, hallelujah. It does not come out. Come on. Verses, verse what? Six, he said what? And having in a readiness. Oh, hallelujah. There was a time, there was a time when, when, when I thought, or maybe it did, I have to go back in my brain, but that ain't relevant right now. There was a time when I, if I saw somebody, I thought they looked good. If I'm looking at you and say, she looks pretty good. All of a sudden, I put my wife there. A readiness. I got a mechanism. As soon as I think you look fine, man, my wife will look good in that. Y'all don't get it. I got a readiness. In other words, every time I see